Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Tyne, Tyna, is that right? Hi, Tyna, nice to see you. We've hi, got a little... Hi. It's Tina, sorry. Yeah, hello. Oh, hi, Tina, how are you? I'm good, um, thanks. We've got a little group. I can see... Hi, Josephine, I can see you logging in. And, um, oh, I'm going to get some of these names wrong. Priyanka, I can see you, and Emma, HP, and um, Ram Ramaka, is that right? Sorry if I've got your name wrong. Sometimes children get hold of your Zoom and it might not even be your name at all, or it might be your husband's name or something or whatever. But I'm Marion and it says so on the screen. So it's nice to meet you. Rahul, nice to see you as well. Thank you so much for joining me. You're all here to learn about the 11 plus, I hope. Yeah. Um, so if you are, then you are in the right place. Great to see you. Glory of God um, and a couple of others there. So we have got a little group. So I, I'm going to pop you. Um, just so that we don't have any background noise, just mostly so that I don't get distracted because I uh, I tend to um, witter on, and uh, if I get on if if I get distracted, then I'll start talking about the weather or something. I do have a dog, so if she makes a noise, I apologise. She's just usually sits good as gold underneath the desk, but sometimes she might um, make a noise. But we are all here to learn about the eleven plus. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to start from scratch, basically, and tell you what the 11 plus is, what kind of an exam it is, the kind of children that um, tend to succeed in the 11 plus. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you about how you can support your child through that 11 plus journey. So I'm going to share with you my tips and tricks and advice that I have as a teacher of over 20 years. And um because there's a lot that you can do at home, but you also be, have to be pretty aware of what it is and what is sort of involved in the whole challenge of the 11 plus before you dive headfirst into it. And then I will share a little bit about Confident Learners, which is my very small, very bespoke tutoring um, company. And we specialize in preparing children in year four and year five for these exams. OK, so without further ado, I am going to share my screen with you. Guys, if you have questions, I'm all for questions. Yeah, I know there's quite a few of you on now, which is great to see lots of you in lunch breaks and things. But if you have questions, please feel free to use the chat. Um, and you can, of course, unmute yourself. We will have some questions at the end. Um, but hopefully, I'll answer a lot of your questions as we go through. Okie doke. So let's get going. This is all about how to ensure that your child can pass these 11 plus exams to get a place at the grammar or independent schools in this country, which are well known for being the top schools in the country. Okay, so without further ado, what is the 11 plus exam? Now I want to get this absolutely straight because I do speak to a lot of parents who actually don't know what the 11 plus really is. So I'm just letting a couple more people in. If you're just joining, welcome, welcome. If you're watching on replay as well, you are very welcome. Please do email me with any questions. So how are we doing? We've got a few more people just popping in. I'm just going to, if I could ask you to just mute yourselves just so that there's no background noise, that would be great. So what is the 11 plus? It is, um, the 11 plus is a competitive and challenging exam. There's somebody just without, with a bit of background noise and it just, it, Josephine, oh, let me just pop you. I think it might be, there we go, done. Right, so it is a competitive and challenging exam. Let's just point out that not everybody in the UK has to sit this exam. It is an option that you can take for your child if you want them to go to a selective school. Now, our selective schools in this country are grammar schools and independent schools. They choose the brightest kids and they let them in. It's as simple as that. OK, now a grammar school is supported by the government. It's a maintained school, so it's free and independent schools are the fee paying ones. Now, you might be interested in independent schools. In fact, it would be super helpful if you could pop in the chat, whether you're going for grammar schools or independent schools or maybe both. Um, if you are considering independent schools, obviously they are fee paying schools. If you're considering um, bursaries and scholarships, then we can have a chat about that another time. Um, my background is largely independent schools, so I can really help you on that. But just to be aware that even though they say scholarships, it doesn't mean that it's free. OK, scholarships to independent schools are usually only about 10, maximum 15 percent of the fees. OK, so most of you will be doing grammar schools. Some might be doing independence. If, if you let me know, then, um, well, 
I'm going to help you all anyway, because the 11 plus exams are um, pretty similar for both. OK, certainly the curriculum that the children have to cover is very similar. In fact, not if not identical for both. It's just how the exams are um, laid out and how we prepare for them that changes. OK, so that's what the 11 plus is. It's it's a, a school. Oh, it's an exam that you do to get into a competitive school, a selective school. All right. It covers. Then it will say a lot of the literature, and if you look on the websites, it'll say that it covers the key stage two curriculum, which is officially years two, sorry, years three, four, and five, and six. Okay, so for the sake of argument, it's year four, five, and six curriculum, but it also goes deep into year five, into year six, and therefore covers a bit of the year seven curriculum as well. So it's absolute rubbish when they say that you only need to know up to the end of year five because the exams are at the beginning of year six, okay? Unfortunately, and I don't believe it's fair, they test these children at the beginning of year six, like in September for those grammar schools, a little bit later for independent schools, but the exams are in September of year six. And the children are tested on skills, concepts, knowledge that they have not yet learnt because they are going to be taught it in school in year six, because it includes that year six curriculum. So that's the biggest challenge we have as teachers and parents of these children, is that they're tested on stuff they don't yet know. Okay, it doesn't sound very fair, does it? But unfortunately, that is the way it is. So there you go, the exams are right at the beginning of year six. If you're doing independent schools, um, then they tend to be a bit later, like in November or even January, we've got a lot of children doing it now, um, this week in 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 november uh, in january okay the other biggest challenge is the hugely um competitive nature of these schools now they are vastly oversubscribed so there might be hundreds of children going for just 80 or 100 places and therefore the pass mark has to be high they are looking for the really bright and able children okay the pass mark has to be around 80 usually 85%, certainly those very competitive exams, schools such as Henrietta Barnett's or some of the Slough Consortium down where I live in Kent, we actually work with children all over the country because we work online. But down in Kent, there's obviously a lot of a lot of grammar schools and some of them are hugely competitive. Okay, So you're looking at over 90% pass marks for those and the competition is huge. All right. So only the top 20% of children that sit this exam will get a place at this at the school of choice it's it's um pretty brutal but that is the truth and so what we intend to do and what i hope to pass on to you so that you can do it as well is support your child help them realize their full potential accelerate and um accelerate their learning way beyond the classroom so that they are in the best possible situation to pass one of these exams but they are also set up for education throughout the rest of their lives so remember because remember we're on a ladder now and this is just the very first step they're they're still at primary school they've got to get into a secondary school but once they get into that secondary school whether that's the local comprehensive or it's a grammar or independent school you want your child to be the very top of the class Okay. You want them to be in the best possible situation and doing this 11 plus preparation, yes, it's it enables them to sit the exams and hopefully pass into one of these schools, but it also sets them up for education and learning in the future. I'll talk to you more about that. Okay. Um, just to skip back to the first point on this slide, uh, the there are four subjects that the children will be examined in in these exams. I should have mentioned this earlier. Sorry. Maths and English are curriculum subjects. Obviously, they've been learning them at school, but not in enough, not in enough detail. And they certainly won't get to the end of year six before the end of year five. But then there's these other two subjects called verbal reasoning and nonverbal reasoning. So you might have heard of those. Yeah. Um, if you have heard of them then now is the time to start practicing, whether you're in year two or year five, that is something that you as parents can introduce 
right now at home because they're already learning maths and English at school. So they're getting a lot of the foundations there. The verbal and nonverbal are totally new. So please have a look at those. I'm going to send you some book suggestions on um, how you can do that. Um, Hi, glory of God. You, uh, I am recording it for you and um, I'm going to send you the replay this afternoon. So don't worry about that because lots of people want to watch it again or share it with other halves or children or whatever as well. So I do record this and I will send it to you. So um, please do take notes, but I am also sending you a recording. Okay, good. So who is this exam for? Now, I hope I haven't put the absolute fear of God into you already because um, it's not for everybody. As I said, you don't have to do an exam to get into the, sec the state secondaries. Those schools are done by um, postcodes, just like your primary school selections, okay? Um, but anybody can apply. You absolutely can apply. You can go through the process. You can sit the exam. You can do all the preparation, but very few will pass, right? Those that pass tend to be the ones that are bright and able children. Now, how do you know whether your child has the potential to do brilliantly at 11 plus or not? We don't know. We don't know because we haven't actually given them the opportunity to try, okay? Now, a good indicator at this stage is whether or not your child is at or above expected level. Now, you might have seen this on their school reports, quite a kind of binary way of categorizing children. But there is like an expected level and children can be below expected or working towards expected level, or they can be at expected or above expected or even at greater depth, which is the highest level. OK, now. In my experience, those children who are at or above or at greater depth already in maths and English at school are the ones that are most likely to succeed. To be completely honest with you, if your child is below expected level or working towards expected level at school, they are probably better um, that you would do better to ensure that they reach expected level at school. OK, so I would focus if your child is one of those, then I would focus on the school curriculum and making sure that they are at the level that they need to be at for year four or year five, okay? Those children who are above um, expected level are more likely to cope with the extra learning that is required for the 11 plus, okay? We also have to instill in our children because you might, you might not be there yet with your child. They might not yet have a positive growth mindset, okay? And a desire to better themselves. They might not yet understand why they have to do this extra work you might come across a little bit of resilience from them uh, resistance rather not resilience resistance from them uh, when you suggest doing extra work so I'm going to talk show you how you can talk to your child about that and get them on board and grow their mindset into one of a more positive sort of um, confidence building growth mindset okay but importantly you guys are here which is 10 out of 10 for effort and dedication to your child's learning. If you value education, you can see the lifelong benefits that an excellent education will give your child. Okay, so you are one of those parents, but it does take some effort, some support, some time, um, hopefully not too much stress, but there is a sort of, there is an investment from parents and from children in this as well. Okay, time and effort. All right, so that's the 11 plus. Um, in a nutshell, and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail, but very briefly, now that we've got everybody here, I think this is me, I'm Marion, this is my little dog, Martha, who's currently sitting underneath the desk at the moment. I have been teaching since the year 2000, so that is over 23 years now. I'm going into my 24th year of teaching. Most of that has been in independent prep schools um, and I've set up pre-preps, I've run pre-preps, I've um, been head of junior schools, which is Key Stage 2, and then most lastly, I was head of a prep school in London. And if any of you know the South West London, or well, anywhere in London, but education is hugely, selective education is very competitive in London. And so we were preparing 50 children every year for 11 plus into some of the most competitive schools in the country, okay? And then I was always tutoring alongside my teaching. So I've been tutoring for many years. 
but now we specialize in um, 11 plus tuition for year four and five children in small groups. OK, we also do one to ones, but mostly we teach our children in small groups with a very small team of expert qualified teachers. OK, very experienced teachers. That's important. We're not just students. Um, reading off a page. I'll tell you more about us later. Okay, so that's what we do just so that you can you know that I'm not coming from a random place on the internet. I have been teaching for a long time in classrooms. Very happy parents. This is a little very happy child down here in the corner saying um, heartfelt gratitude for all the hard work and dedicated time you've invested in me and the other children. So children love it. Building confidence, um, transformational impact on children, all this kind of thing makes my heart sing, makes me very proud of what we have achieved because we're changing the lives of these children. And that to me is, is, uh, is hugely rewarding, okay? Lots and lots of different schools. So we work with children, as I say, going into grammar and independent schools, but because we're online, we work all over the country. So um, quite a few around London here, Ipstock places where I used to work, Denmark Road High School is in Gloucester, Harrow and Eton kind of speak for themselves. Um, Sherbin's down in Dorset, um, Reading Blue Cloaks, Manchester High School. Some of these grammar schools are in um, all over all over the country, right up to sort of Heckman de Wyke in Yorkshire, various other ones. OK, so that's that's what we've done and that's what we continue to do. So without further ado, let's let's narrow down. So I have hopefully haven't sent you running for the hills. Hopefully you feel that the 11 plus is something that you would like your child to try, you know your child is quite bright, quite able, maybe not reaching their full potential, maybe coasting along in third gear, they've got a little bit more to give and you think you want to give these 11 plus exams a go. So the first thing to do is to get the little cherub on board, okay? Because as I said, unless you've got an exceptional child and they are quite exceptional, but the kind of child who wants to, who runs in every night and wants to do as much homework as possible, then um, you need to help your child understand why they are doing these, these exams, okay? Telling an eight or nine-year-old that they need to do three or four hours of extra study a week because they've got an exam in a year's time is, um, is sometimes a little counterproductive. We need to talk to children in a way that they understand, okay? Because a lot of their friends won't be doing this. They might feel quite isolated in doing it, all right? So first of all, Sit down with a cup of coffee and a notepad and think about why you want this for your child. Why are you doing this? Why are you willing to, to put in the extra time and the effort and potentially money into helping your child to succeed in the 11 plus exams? Why are you doing it? Okay. Does your child know why they are doing it? That's the next bit. Okay. They also need to want to succeed. They need to want to succeed in their education. Sorry, let me just turn, let me just turn my phone off. Completely. Hold on. There we go. No more interruptions. Um, so do they also want to succeed? So think about your big why. And that might be because you want to give your child the best opportunities. Now, this word opportunities, what does it mean? Why do you want to go to a grammar or an independent school? Now, it's fact. The statistics tell us that children who have been to grammar and independent schools tend to be the ones who get to the better universities they do better at university and therefore they end up in the better jobs okay so we're looking way down the line they also when they're actually at school they ha have the doors open to fantastic opportunities not just in terms of um facilities yeah they there is more money in, in in these schools and so the facilities are better the football pitches the swimming pools the climbing walls the drama studios, all of these facilities are better than the government funded schools. OK, but also think about the kind of environment that your child will be in at one of these schools. Now, the fact that every single child in that classroom has passed this hugely difficult exam means that they are bright, they are hardworking and they are ambitious students. And if you're the some part of those people around you, like if, if the people around you make you who you are, you know, bright, hardworking, ambitious students around you, your child will then become that bright, hardworking, ambitious student as well. OK, there are also ex certain expectations. So you might find at the local school that they are not. Most children don't stay at school past 16. 
they might leave and go and get a job, okay, which is fine, but that might not be the route that you want for your child. You might want your child to go on and do further education, go into do sixth form, do A levels, do um, degrees, go on to university, all right? You want that path for them. They're much more likely to set that expectation for themselves in one of these environments, okay? In one of these selective environments, okay? You also need to, um, well, you also might feel that your child is coasting a little bit. Now I speak to a lot of parents in my job, a lot of them have done for years. And one of the most frustrating things as a parent is when you know that your child is, is capable of more than they are showing you or the teacher at school. And there's a million reasons for that, but one of them is because they're in an enormous class and the, the huge variety of abilities in that class means that the teacher cannot possibly give your child who's probably near the top of the class their full support okay and the support that they need and deserve and that unfortunately is just the way the education system is it's hugely um there's over you know, massively oversubscribed schools and so classrooms are far too big okay um so going to one of these selective schools and this is something you need to think about and communicate with your child is going to give them an opportunity to shine and to show how good they really are, okay? It's important that children know that they're not doing extra study because they're weak and they need to do some extra maths or extra English. They're doing it because they're really good and they need to be excellent. They need to be outstanding. They can be, they have that potential, okay? Um, and then once you've got all of this clear in your head, communicate that with your child. So you value education and you know that good school results lead to univ good universities, good jobs, et cetera. And you know that your child is capable of great things and you want to open the doors so that they can fly, et cetera. But you have to communicate that with your child and get them on board with it because otherwise you're setting yourselves up for, if you're, the, if you're in year four now, you've got about 18 months of, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Why do I have to do it? OK, and that happens. So getting them on board is really important. So involve them in the process. Take them to look at schools, look at websites together, talk to current parents and children if you possibly can. There's probably some in your local area, maybe even family members or friends who are at that school. What makes that school special? But importantly, push the right button for your child. OK, if um you don't want to put a square peg into a round hole. So you've got to find the right school for your child. You've got to find the one, if they are mad about sport or drama or art or something else as well, then don't go, go, don't go for a school that's only academic and there's nothing else outside it, okay? So, but find the right button. So find a school that's near you and also is, you know, maybe they, they love playing tiddlywinks and there's a tiddlywinks um, club there or something that will get your child on board show them the climbing wall if that's what they're into get them on board with they they need to be excited about it they need to be positive about it so that they will do the work because otherwise you as a parent you're bashing your head against a wall every night you've got to get your child on board okay and then it's a little bit bitty this this slide because it's all sort of my tips and I just want to sort of show you they don't necessarily link together but we need to praise the effort and not the result. Now, this is how you get your very good, high achieving child to extraordinary and excellent and getting these top sort of 90 percent in these exams. And this is a teacher tip. We praise the effort and not the results. So however brilliant you think that piece of work might be, you've got to identify some good parts about it. OK, and say that you've tried really hard. I can see that you've really tried with your paragraphs and your sentence openers. They're brilliant in this piece of writing. However, Let's next time see if we can um, improve the connectives and the uh, and the direct speech. OK, so in, in primary classrooms, we call it sort of two stars and a wish. So you give them two bits of praise and then you give them a target to work towards. And as a parent, if you do that, every piece of work, work they do, they will always be willing to try, always striving for better, always willing to take that risk. And that is confidence, that trying, trying equals confidence. If you try, you're willing to try. It's okay to make mistakes. It's written on my wall. Go for it. Take take a risk, make a mistake, try. Only then 
will your child excel to that top level? Okay. So that's important part of teaching when you're at home as well. Um, but they've also got to know that whilst passing and getting into a dream school would be amazing, the alternative is not failure. Now, this goes back to what I said at the beginning about stress. Our children are very young at the moment. They are um, in their sort of in the right in the middle of their youth in, in their childhood. We want them to enjoy their childhood. We want them to be children, but we want them to achieve the very best that they personally are capable of. This does not mean hothousing them and stressing them out and sending them for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of tuition every weekend, right? The alternative is not failure. Even the very process of doing the 11 plus preparation will set your child in extremely good stead for secondary school, wherever that might be. They will be way ahead of anybody else in their future classes, wherever they end up. So I want you to bear that in mind because I think we can all get a little bit sort of swept up in the 11 plus and oh, it's all about the 11 plus and getting into that school. That is really important and it is a large part of what we do. But we also need to look at the bigger picture and remember that this is just a small step on their educational ladder and the preparation that they do between now and exam day will, will basically be a huge investment for their future education as well. They've still got all of secondary school to go, all of university professional exams, you know, that kind of thing. All right. So just get perspective and talk to your child about about that. So talking to them about target setting, about trying, about mindset, talking to them about the fact that it's not failure. We just want you to do the very, very best that you can, etc. That's all really important part of pre preparing your child for the exams. OK. Um, so now. That's the kind of, we're going, as I say, we did big picture, we're kind of coming smaller and now we're beginning to really zoom in on how do you actually teach your child what they need to know for these exams in time for these exams. And that's the biggest, well, one of the biggest problems we have. It's not just the enormous curriculum because we've got to do year four, five and six in the space of two years or sometimes even one year, okay? But it's also the fact that these children have to sit an exam. And so exam preparation in a timed, condition in a big hall with lots of other people around is part of it as well so that's the goal and this is how we do it okay first of all do not assume that school will teach you everything in time they simply won't you have to do some extra work whatever the websites say you have to do some extra work quite apart from anything else you've got verbal and non-verbal reasoning as i said which um are two subjects that uh they don't even touch in most schools so you've got quite a lot to do okay so as a parent, what can you do? Don't rely on Facebook. Don't rely on other mums who may not know what they're talking about. I call it um, playground gossip. It's a bit of um, Chinese whispers, isn't it? Oh, did you hear the, oh, uh, this? Apparently this exam's got that in it and this exam's got that in it. And my son's doing this and my son's doing brilliantly. And why isn't your son doing that? You know, don't rely on all of that tittle tattle. Go to somebody who knows what they're talking about. Okay. Now, people like me are all over uh, all these groups are full of Facebook groups are full of tutors. Please ask the tutors and not other parents. But if you want to do some research yourself, the websites I use for my research are Exam Papers Plus, which is, um, well, it's fundamentally somewhere you buy exam papers from, but they're very expensive. So I'd go to Atom Learning for that in a sec. But the Exam Papers Plus has an enormous amount of information on every single school in the country, independent and grammar. It'll give you which exam boards they use, what the pass mark is. Um, uh, the It'll give you information on, on admissions processes and catchment areas and all sorts of things. OK, so go to Exam Papers Plus and look, at, look up your school there. There's also Atom Learning, which is a learning platform. Some of you might have come across it already. It is brilliant. I highly recommend it. Yes, I do work with them on some things, um, but regardless of that, I think they're brilliant. But that, this is brilliant for the year fives, particularly coming towards the end. So the last four or five months, it's well worth that £70 a month investment for the last four or five months to go on to Atom Learning because they have a totally inexhaustible um, library of exam papers. OK, so you can do GL paper every single day if you want. 
for the summer holidays on Atom Learning for just £70 a month, whereas these guys are £25 per, per paper. Okay, they are good. They are very good, but they're just far more expensive. So just Atom Learning is good. If you want discounts for either of these, I have it. All right, I can send that to you. My other top tip is to start early. Now, I get asked this a lot by parents. When should we start the 11 plus preparation? Now, there's too early and there's too late. There's a kind of perfect point to start. And the perfect point to start is, I would say, at the beginning of year four. Now, don't panic if you're not at the beginning of year four. Maybe you're right in the middle of year four. We're in January. We're in year four right now. A lot of you will be. That's absolutely fine as well. OK, we can do it in that time. But I just want you to be aware of the time frame. So Mount Everest, big mountain. This is my analogy of, of the exam. The summit of the mountain is exam day. Now, that for most of you will be September um, of year six. If you start in year four, any time really in year four, sort of round about now is perfect, then you've got a very gradual climb up that mountain. You've got time to revisit tricky, tricky topics. You've got time to go back and revise. You've got time to, to make sure those foundations are absolutely super strong. You've got time all the way through, okay? And, and it's a gradual climb. If you're right now, if you're at the beginning of year five, do we have anybody who's in year five? Um, if you haven't done any study yet, then it is quite a steep climb to that summit of that mountain to exam day. OK, we don't actually take children anymore who have not done any work previously for year five. We've got a couple of spaces only in our year five groups, and those are for children who have done a lot of work already and are ready to just slot into our into our programs. OK. The year fours, absolutely fine time to start. You've got this, you know, we can help you, we can help you go over what, what they might have already learnt in at the at the beginning of year four. Um, we can support you with the foundations and keep you going all the way up to it. So it's it's timed so that you're at the perfect place. So timing wise, we like to finish the curriculum in about May, June time. And I recommend if you're doing it at home, you do the same. Finish the curriculum about May, June, and then you've got June, July, and August to do exam preparation. There is no point in starting really early. So starting in year two and year three, there's lots you can do at home, mostly storytelling, vocabulary, spellings, mental maths, all that kind of thing. You can do that in year two and three. But honestly, if you start too early, then your child will be at the top of the mountain before the beginning of year five and then bored, losing motivation, and they start to come down the mountain, you see. So you've got to be a little bit careful of timing. Um, now, so that's timing. Right. The next thing on my list of things to share with you is exam boards. Now, this is a big question I get asked a lot. The most common grammar school exam board is the GL exams. Now, um, the GL exams are um, multiple choice and they do not include um, creative writing. However, we teach creative writing and I strongly recommend that you practice it because a lot of schools do creative writing at, um, in their second stage of exam. But your child also might not be doing GL or you might be applying to three or four different schools. And so there'll be different exam structures for different schools. So the CSSE is an Essex consortium. This one's Future Schools, which is a few, only a very few schools, but they do do it. CEM is an what well, they used to do CEM for grammar schools. They now it's more of an independent school when they do something called the CEM Select, which is an online independent school exam. Similarly, with the ISEB, there's online called ISEB Pretest, and then the independent schools also use ISEB papers, which are written papers. But these ones, all of these ones, do include creative writing. Okay, so it's only the GL ones, and that's the first stage of a lot of exams. That don't include creative writing. They do include verbal and nonverbal. Pretty much everywhere does. There's a couple of schools that don't include verbal, but I believe that those, um, the ones that don't include a separate verbal reasoning exam, that's part of English because verbal reasoning is a lot of spelling, grammar, vocabulary anyway. Okay. So know your board. Again, back to Exam Papers Plus and Atom Learning, they'll be able to tell you what the board is. Um, if you work with us, I help you with all of that. Um, Oh, just on Atom Learning, and they've got brilliant 
uh, um, on Atom Learning. They've also got reading lists and vocabulary lists and blogs about it as well. So do, do go to those websites. Once you've got your board and you know which, what you're doing and which schools you're going to, you need to get a curriculum, which I'm going to send you the maths and English curriculum for maths for, for the 11 plus and create a structured plan. Now, a structured plan, ladies and gentlemen, is not we are working through a CGP book. <laughs> OK, a lot of parents say, well, we're just working through the books. Well, great. Work through the books. But you've got to know when you're going to cover each topic so that you get to the top of the mountain at the right time. OK, as a teacher, um, I've set out, well, we've done the whole thing. It's all modules. We're, we've got modules. And each week we know exactly what we're teaching for year four and year five. And we do that using a curriculum so that we know exactly when that we are going to complete that curriculum. And every child in our care will have covered everything they need to know by a certain point. OK, and if you're doing it at home, you need to do the same. So get hold of a curriculum. I'm sending you one and then make a structured plan. You can then use the books to execute that plan. You see what I mean? So books, CGP. Brilliant. Everybody's heard of CGP. Just my top tip on CGP is a lot of people go straight for these 10 minute tests. OK, I would avoid the 10 minute tests until you've covered the whole curriculum because they obviously they're, they're well, not obviously at all, but um, they don't just test on one topic. They will test on lots of different topics. So they're like little mini exams, which is great for when you're practicing exams. But if your child hasn't learned half of what's in that test, then you've already set them up to fail because um, they can't do those questions, okay? And that's very um, counterproductive on, on the confidence boosting. What I suggest instead are these ones, which are practice books. And you'll see that they've got age, ages as well. This one's nine to 10 year olds. I think this one, yeah. And then this one is the 10 to 11 year olds. You need, for year four, we start year four on eight to nine year olds, and then we move quite quickly on to nine to ten. So now we're in January, you should be moving on to nine to tens, but please do the eight to nines first and then go on to the nine to tens. And then we do this through over the next year and then into not 10 to 11s for the year fives, sort of in about sort of September, October of year five. OK, so CGP are brilliant. The other ones we use are. Um, these ones, which are complete revision and practice books, these are very good too. This one happens to be a non-verbal reasoning one, but these revision and practice books, simply because they teach you how to do it. So they're not just workbooks. And I think it's really important for children to, I mean, obviously, if you work with a tutor, a proper tutor, they will teach as well. But if you're doing it at home, these books have explanations of how to do it, and then they ask the questions. Okay, so those are what I call teaching books rather than just workbooks. And there's also bang for your buck, big chunky book, lots of information, lots of practice, not very expensive CGP books. Okay, so those are my top ones. Then first, uh, Galore Park are what we use because nobody's ever heard of them outside the classroom. We use them because we're teachers and this is what we use in schools. So this has got ISCB written on it, which means it's um, suitable for the independent schools as well. But it is for all exam boards. OK, so those are the year four books, English and maths. They're actually textbooks, like good old fashioned textbooks like we used to have at school. Um, again, they teach you and then they ask you. So these are what we use. So our year fours, you have to buy these two books. Those are the only resources you have to actually get yourself. So the children have them in front of them. And then the year fives, which I've temporarily mislaid, the year fives use up, use the revision guides from Galore Park, also Galore Park. Um, and again, they, they show you what to do and then they ask questions. But we use these in our lessons as well because they're jolly good. And there's assessments after each module. They're brilliant. OK, so that's Galore Park. I'm sending you all of these in, in an email later as well. The last one I've mentioned on there for year five parents is the first past the post books. They've got this little running man on them. They're in different colors for different subjects. Maths happens to be my subject. So I'm, I've got some English books, but mostly maths. Um, these are very good for exam preparation because you can focus on each topic. So for example, if you need to focus on fractions and decimals, there's three pages of fractions and decimals. 
but they're split up into different um, ability levels. So you've got beginner, then intermediate, and then advanced, all just on fractions and decimals. So when you're doing exam practice and little Joey has messed up three percentage questions, you know you need to practice percentages. And so you go to that book and you start and you actually practice percentages. Okay. So um, that's my kind of advice on the books. The other ones, so people then say, well, what about let's and bond and all of those things? Well, they are fine. You just don't get very much money for your money. So this is a Collins book and it's just enormous print. So there's not a lot on each page and it's really skinny and it's the same price as a, as a CGP book. So they're fine. All, all these 11 plus books are good, better than none, um, but they're just not really good value for money. This one's one of my favorites, Bond book, and it's a ha maths handbook. And it basically teaches you as a parent exactly what, there's no questions in it, so it's not for children, but it's brilliant for um, how to teach your child and what they need to know in maths for the 11 plus. It's, it's just got everything in it. It's absolutely great. So I highly recommend that one as well. Okay. Right, I could be here all day telling you about this kind of thing. Let's move on. Let me know if there's any questions. As I said, we'll do lots of questions at the end. But if you have any questions, please let me know. OK, moving on. So we've got all the books. We've got the plan. We've got the curriculum. We know what we're doing. We've structured it all. But then you need to create a timetable with your child. So you need to make a routine of it, basically. They go to piano, they go to football, they go to gymnastics, whatever it is, every week at a set time. You need to make sure that there's maths, English, verbal and nonverbal reasoning carved into every single week that you have between now and the exams, okay? So term time, you need to say, right, on a Monday, we're not doing any, we're not doing any piano practice because, well, you should always do your piano, piano practice. But we're not doing a piano lesson because we've got a maths lesson. Whether that's at home or with a tutor, whatever, you've got to make sure that you're carving out time. Saying, oh, well, we'll do half an hour on a Sunday just doesn't work, I'm afraid. That just doesn't work. A, you never sit down and actually get it done. And B, that's not enough. OK, make sure you share that planning with your child because um, children and I have worked with children for well over 20 years. So I've thousands and thousands of children I've taught. And even the most neurotypical child does not like change and surprises, okay? They like to know what's coming up. If they're coming home and they're going to kick off their shoes, put on their pajamas and sit down and watch telly all evening, they will not like being woken up from that half an hour and going, right, come on, let's do some verbal reasoning. So make sure they know what is coming up, okay? And maybe plan it with them. So I quite often suggest maybe on a Sunday night, you sit down with the timetable and you go, right, okay, so this is what you're doing this week. When are we going to do our maths? When are we going to do our VR? When are you going to do that homework? When are you going to do this practice paper, etc. Okay. So um, do, sorry, I'm just looking at the, the um, HP. You've just sent me, I've just got a direct message saying, do extracurricular activities also count in the admissions process? No, they just, for grammar schools, they just look at exam grades. They don't even interview children, okay? For independent schools, they do look at the whole child and they look at what else you do outside school. So maybe you're, a, you know, your county cricket or whatever. They do look at that and they also interview the children because they want the right type of child as well as just somebody who can pass exams. Grammar schools are a little bit more black and white about it and you either pass or you don't, okay? And then yeah, just make sure when you're doing the planning, make sure that you've got time to cover all the skills and topics before June of year five, because then you do need two or three months minimum to do exam practice before the exams. OK, so there, ladies and gentlemen, that is my advice and top tips. I hope that's useful. I am now going to go on to showing you how you can actually teach your child. Now, for that, I'm going to share with you the Confidence Learners methodology, which is Confident Learners is my little company. And um, as I say, I have a team of very experienced, very qualified, brilliant teachers, very, very lovely people. And um, this is how we teach the children. So you might get some useful advice and tips here on how you can teach as well. OK. Um, Priyanka, yes, you're absolutely welcome. Let me just copy your email address. Well, no, I'm going to send you all the list of books anyway. Oh, were you not on? Ah, OK. Have you not logged in? Are you not on my system? Therefore, let me just do this for you. Um, 
Mm, you might have to email me. I'm not quite sure how to get your email off there. Right. So we'll come back to you, Priyanka, at the end. So our method, we do teach children. We teach children properly. We don't just teach children give by giving them a workbook. OK, but teaching, in my experience, is only part of it. You also have to work on your child's mindset and make sure that they are confident in their abilities. So much so, not just, oh yeah, I'm really good at maths, but confident to, tr to try. Confidence is the willingness to try. Confidence is not just self-belief and thinking that you're brilliant. Confidence is the willingness to actually have a go. And that might mean making some mistakes, okay? And that, that mindset is really important. You, I have not seen children succeed if they don't have that mindset. Secondly, the environment is really important. Now, when we go to school, we create in the classroom a fun, safe and productive working environment, one hopes, okay? Yeah, with people who are all on the same path as your child. Now we do that in our little groups. Um, we do teach one-to-one -one as well, but we find the groups actually for, for 11 plus, there's more energy, there's more um, positivity, there's more competition. The children feel like they belong. It's like going, um, you know, up a, as I say, back to my Mount Everest. You wouldn't do that massive climb by yourself. It's nice to have the support of other people around you. OK, and then the teaching is like the jam in the sandwich. It has to be it has to be expertly done. Now, you can do some of it at home, but at some point you might look and think well actually maybe I need somebody who knows what they're doing here and we we are as I said before we are all actually qualified and experienced teachers because tutoring is not regulated in this country more on that later okay so there's a little sweet spot of success we have a, a supportive environment where everybody feels like they're not alone we have expert teaching and we have a good growth positive confident mindset right then we can succeed. Just on the mindset thing, it is one of my passions. I could talk about it for ages, um, but look up a lady called Carol Dweck, who's D-W-E-C-K, and she talks about the difference between a growth mindset and the flip side, which is a fixed mindset. And as a parent, you, you can really make a difference to your child's mindset from the words you use and your own behavior. Okay, So you can model it and you can use some good, some, for example, we might be guilty as parents of saying, um, oh, well, I was rubbish at math, so I can't help you. Or, um, uh, yeah, you don't need to do any reading now because um, we've got more important things to do. Those kind of things just, you know, we're all guilty of doing it. But what it's telling our children is that reading is not important or um I'm rubbish at maths because my mummy was rubbish at maths as well. Okay. So we've got to maybe change some of the things that we say and some of the models that we do. So I quite often use the example of baking a cake with children. And I say, I'm rubbish at baking. And they say, I bet you're not rubbish at baking. So they immediately try and change my mindset. I'm going to know I'm rubbish at it. Every time I cook a cake it goes wrong. What could I, and, and then, well, you need to practice. They say, children tell me to practice baking cakes. How can I make it better? Read the read the recipe. Make sure I'm using the correct pair of scales. Maybe I'm measuring wrong. You know, you you get the picture. So, as a parent, we can do that. We do that all the time as teachers with our children. Okay, we're always demonstrating a positive mindset and encourage children, encouraging children to have that positive growth mindset. Because only if they believe, they can. Will they be able to? Um. OK, so just quick mention to um, Martina. Yeah, um, I'm just getting a couple of direct messages. So Martin, is that right? Um, we do tutor online. If your daughter's four years old, I have a specialist early years teacher who can help you online. Yes, definitely. One to one. And Sarah. Can we um, can we have a chat? Because I need to know much more about your child because it, being in year five, as I say, it is a steep mountain and we need to have done some work beforehand. But I'm very, very happy to have a chat with you after this. Right, let's go on. Environment. So the environment, as I say, we do teach online. We teach in small groups. And this provides an opportunity for support and affirmation from expert teachers. Lots of positive energy, feeling of belonging, all of this healthy competition I mentioned before. 
very interactive groups as well, I might say. So children ask questions, they answer questions. They're not just left to get on with their own work. OK, then the education itself is, as I said, it, it's really important, but it's supported by a good environment, lovely teachers and um, a positive mindset. What we have to do between now and exam day, between now and the top of that mountain for your child is create that positive that that mindset and that confidence every single day. We have to then firm up those foundations. So if you're in year four, um, that is making sure that year three, obviously some of COVID gaps still lingering, maybe mental maths, um, basically all all the all the curriculum that should have been learnt. We need to make sure it has been learned because without that, we can't build on the next level, which is the 11 plus curriculum. OK, it's like trying to put doors and windows into a house before you've laid the foundations and built the built, built the walls. Once that's in place in year four, we then accelerate that learning. And that does mean moving fast, which is another reason why we have to have expert teachers on board and teaching your child, because somebody who knows how to teach that curriculum quickly but effectively so that it doesn't just go in one ear and out the other so that your child can then apply it to the 11 plus questions okay really important that and we accelerate and apply because we have to go all the way through the year six curriculum well before your child finishes year five okay so that's the that's that's the education part of it how we do this um i'm going to tell you a little bit about our courses now let me just chat um, Tina, I'm coming to exactly that question in a sec. Um, and Joy, yes, so all of our tuition covers both grammar and independent schools until year six, when the grammar school children do their exams, and then we take our independent children through the process for independent schools, which involves slightly different exam styles, same content, same curriculum, but also involves um, interviews and things like that, okay? But yeah, in, um, independent, a, a lot of my background is in independent. I was head of an independent school. So I'm very happy to chat to you about that, Joy. OK, right. Um, so the course is in more detail. I don't believe in three hours on a Saturday. Children are young. They need to have um, individual lessons. So we have one hour of maths and we have one hour of English each week. Now, that's for year four and year five. The, 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 the format is the same. They're not combined age groups, one for year four, one for year five. Maths and English, we put the non-verbal goes in with the maths and the verbal goes in with the English. And we do teach creative writing. Important to notice that we do teach creative writing, as I said before, why it's important. OK, so there's one lesson each week and there's a couple of groups to choose from. So timings and days can can vary. But that we then have this optional Saturday lesson. Now for year four, that's at 9.30 in the morning and for year five, that's at 8.30 in the morning. But this is basically, you have to book in to come along to a session with one of our teachers to go through something that you might not be 100% sure about. So this is so that children don't get left behind, so they don't fall through the cracks and so they don't develop a weakness ahead of the exams, okay? So if, for example, um, a parent emailed me this morning actually wanting to book in on Saturday because their little four year old, um, their little year four child is still struggling with telling the time. So she needs to need some help with that. So, yes, of course. So Joey is coming along on Saturday morning and we're going to do specifically telling the time for him. OK, that's how the support sessions work. It's not a general teaching session. And we do work through the holidays. So, um yeah, we go all the way through from now until the end of August, which takes the year five children right up to their exams. And the year four children means that you don't slack off during the holidays and you're ready to go at the beginning of year five. OK, really important that as well, because, again, I've been teaching for so long that I know how detrimental lots of time off is for children's education. But, well, you know, they do still have to have some holidays, of course, but just not. And they won't be working for eight hours a day. It's just important to keep it ticking over. There is homework, definitely is homework. Again, um, usually about an hour of maths and an hour of English each week, which you then submit to the teacher. He or she marks it and sends it back to you. So there's feed, feedback on the, on, on the homework. Homework is 
a very important part of their learning because it it consolidates what they've already learned in the lesson, but it also um, teaches children to be independent. And at the end of the day, the only person that's going to be sitting that exam is them. Unfortunately, you and I can't be there as well. So their independent learning has to be um, has to be practiced as well. And we do that through homeworks. We do various bits and bobs. We do extension work and um, support work. We provide all resources for you. So like I said, you'd have to buy one book for maths, one book for English, one for VR, one for NVR, and everything else is provided. I have a bookcase here full of books and I share all of that, as do all of my teachers because they've been teaching for over 10 years, all of them. Some of us up to 30 years, okay? So there's loads and loads of stuff. And if you ever need anything, like you'd like some more work on percentages, then we provide that for you, okay? Um, the only thing that you need to do at home as a parent is support and facilitate that learning. So you don't need to do it for them. Um, so you'll just need to make sure, obviously they're still young, so they need to be, they need to be um, told when their lessons are and come along with the computer, with, the, with, the, with their right books and their sharpened pencil, you know, all that jazz. They need to have, have had their snacks. So all of that's a sort of parent responsibility. But we also ask you, please, to read every single day with your child. That's important. That is actually it's not it's not important. It's absolutely vital that you read with your child every day. And that's listening to them read, but also reading to them, because we need to extend these children's vocabulary and their understanding, their comprehension, their creativity. All of this, even in maths, understanding the question revolves around reading so reading is one of like it is the, the the keystone really of all of the 11 plus but also spellings and vocab particularly in year five we don't have time to do those in the lessons so a lot of times tables and mental maths and things the faster and more accurate you are in maths the better you are okay so that's homework i'm getting there i'm i try to make this only an hour i'm nearly there okay so thank you for bearing with me as I said before, we cover all exam boards. So Joy, this is back to your question. We prepare children, this 11 plus is, it's like a blanket term for selective exams into selective schools. So they might not call it an 11 plus, they might call it an entrance exam, okay? But there is all the same content and largely the same, um, the same format, but there are small, differences between ISCB and GL, for example. So that's independent and grammar. And um, we focus on that towards in the summer of year five. So once we've learned all of the curriculum, which is the same for everything, we then make sure that each child is practicing the right kind of exam for the school that they're going for. Most children go for more than one school and therefore they're practicing all of them. All right, but just we do make sure of that. Um, that, so that's all the way through July exam preparation. And then for those of you doing independent school exams, we then make sure that um, the children are prepared. They, those can be anywhere from October, November, some in December, January. Some, As I said before, some of our kids are currently doing their exams in January. So we support that as well, if you wish. But the, the main sort of weekly lessons go up to September. Okay. Um, so somebody just asked about uh, group sizes. We have a maximum of 10. In year four, it tends to be around about eight children, eight to 10 children. Um, they're all in the same boat. They're all about the same level, and we make sure they are. Um, we do record the lessons. Now, this is one of the absolute um, sort of joys of online learning. Not only is it super, um, it's, it's really convenient. You don't have to drive anywhere. You know, you can do it from wherever you are, um, even if you're on holiday or whatever. But it's also important to be able to go back and look at these lessons, revise them. Even if you're sick, you don't miss a lesson, right? Um, and then they're kept in a safe portal. As I said, we're all very fully qualified. We're very experienced. Um, and so we know how to engage all the different types of learners, you know how to keep children on track, engaged importantly enjoying their learning I spoke to a mummy yesterday whose year four child joined this week and I said did she enjoy it and she said yes she loved it and it was the teacher was absolutely lovely so it's really important to me that your child is enjoying their lessons okay um my role is a kind of support role I have done a lot of the teaching and I've written all the courses so that's all there but 
I help you as a parent with your school selections and um, application process and um, all of that. Okay, so I, I, that's, I'm a sort of um, advisory role and support if you need it. We give you all our resources. There's loads of resources on the portal. Um, and as I said, any recommended books, so I'm going to send you some of those anyway. So there we go. That is about it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there's the summary. Okay, lots of exam preparation, full portal of resources, etc. But at the end of the day, we want to build your child's confidence so that they can attack this exam with confidence, right? Now that for me is really, it's all about their confidence. But in doing so, we will provide them with a fundamental understanding of the core foundations of maths and English way beyond that which they would learn in the classroom. And that will last them a lifetime. So I want you to think about what I talked about at the beginning, that big picture. If your child does the preparation now, that foundation will set them up for their GCSEs, their A-levels, their degree, et cetera, because all the way through their senior school, they will be on top. They will be above their peers. They will be confident. They will enjoy their learning. They will be independent learners. Okay, All of that will set them up for the future. So I believe that the 11 plus is important, but it is just the, that step on the ladder to the rest of education. Okay. Um, the cherry on the top is passing the 11 plus, and that is obviously our aim, but it is just the cherry on the top of a lot of other benefits, okay? And we do that through mindset, teaching, and the environment. So let's just talk about, um, oh, you mean, okay, year, oh, year four, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Martin, I didn't realize. Yes, you mean year four. So, um, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So th this is the course. These courses are for year four and year five, okay? So, and year four is the perfect time to start. So if you were to, let's talk about investment for a second and sort of like how we do this. If you were to get just a, a good, an average tutor for the 11 plus, let me just tell you to be very careful out there in the world of tutors. It's a little bit of a bugbear of mine, but um, you wouldn't ask, you wouldn't, um, like somebody comes and checks your boiler, they have to be registered as and a proper gas technician, right? You wouldn't go to a yoga class and expect somebody who's never who's never taught yoga before to be teaching you. And you certainly wouldn't expect to send your child to school to be taught by somebody who's not a qualified teacher. Um, however, tutoring is totally unregulated. And there are many, many people out there who are tutoring who have never been in a classroom before in their lives. And I think it's really important to choose your tutors wisely. If a, a teacher really knows how to teach every type of child okay, in the very best way possible, in a way that they understand, in the way that they can they can um, they 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 can take on board and they can they can use and apply to exam questions, they're just as I say, they're professional teachers. They know what they're doing. So if you want a professional teacher, you're looking in the region of four forty pounds an hour, which at three times a week starts to mount up. Um, really good tutors. So our tutors are, they're very experienced. So their prices are between 50 and 70 pounds per hour. So that adds up. Okay. But we can deliver all of what I've told you in a small group with these same expert tutors that charge 60 or 70 pounds an hour for just 240 pounds a month. Okay. Now this is a monthly subscription. It's not an hourly rate. It can't even be worked out as an hourly rate because the support, the advice, the resources, all of that goes above and beyond just an hourly rate. OK, um, but there is just one I, I'm doing a. I'm doing a discount just for you guys, and I'm saying this kind of because this is literally the last week that I'm doing it after this week, there'll be no more discounts at all. Um, and that discount is you can pay up front for three months right now. And that would be a saving of 120 pounds. It works out at just 200 pounds a month. So if you paid 600 pounds now, that would cover you for the rest of January, February, March, and then you wouldn't pay anything again until uh, April, okay? Um, so that is, that, that is what's on offer right now. If 600 pounds is a bit too much, which I totally understand after Christmas might be, then there's still a little bit of a discount with a 220 pounds per month. 
just for the first three months. Again, both of these after three months would revert to the usual price of £240 per month. OK, and the end of this week is the absolute cutoff for that. Anybody joining next week will be paying £240 a month. OK, so that's our offer. That's our monthly subscription. I'm going to put the, uh, the, the link in the chat for you and come back to your questions. But just have a think. OK, I know it's not something that you want to kind of dive into immediately, but I want you to think about what I've talked about since the beginning. Think about your child, specifically your child. Is your child up for it? And then are you up to it? Are you ready to embrace the challenge and go for it? Because if you don't try, you will never know. And in my opinion, no time spent learning is ever wasted. So whatever happens, you've learned something. They've learned something. You've probably learned something as well. Okay. But if you want to give your child the very best education available, you have to give it a go. You have to try, you have to open that door so that they can go on to excel in their GCSEs, A-levels, all that big picture stuff I was talking to you about, okay? You could do it yourself, you absolutely can, but you might want the guidance, support and expert teaching of trained, experienced professional teachers so that you have the confidence that your child is learning everything that they need to know in the right way at the right time and they're enjoying it, okay? And that's what we can help you with. I'm going to send you curriculum information. I'm going to send you books. I'm going to send you lots of stuff to get you started. Um, and if you'd like to join us, then I would wholeheartedly welcome you and we can have a chat and um, talk about your child as an individual and how we can help them, okay? Just leave you with a little quote from one of our clients from last year. Um, materials, lessons, support, the help all exceeded my expectations. It's well organized and prepared. She knows what she's doing. One would hope so after a few years in the classroom. Um, and it's perfect. So that is a genuine quote from a genuine parent. And hopefully we can do the same for your child as well. OK, so let's move to questions. I'm going to pop the links in the chat. But thank you for listening. Thanks for staying with me. Um, I'm sorry I've gone over the hour. I do chatter. Um, let me have a look. So we've got some questions here. So uh, do, 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 do. how many children are there in a group? I hope I answered that one. Um, independent schools and grammar schools. Yes, we do. Let me just stop the share so that I can see you all. There we go. Um, and then what is the success rate? Hmm. Depends on what you think of success. So success getting into a school. A lot of our children do get into the, ch in, into the schools that they apply to. But I can tell you that every single one of our children that learns with us grows in confidence, they grow in skills, their teachers are um, often, um, if not always, amazed by the transformation in their child's, not just their ability, but their attitude to learning and things. What we cannot guarantee, and nobody can guarantee, that your child will 100% pass, because at the end of the day, your child is a 10-year-old who goes into an exam room and anything can happen, right? You know your child. I've worked with children for years. Anything can happen. But what we do guarantee is that your child will be ready for that exam and they will feel confident about it. OK, that's what we that that's what that's what we can definitely guarantee. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to pop the links in whilst you think of your think of your questions. My dog has just climbed up onto my lap. Apologies. Um, let me just go and get the links for you, because then I can show you the days and times. Um, because there are, we are getting quite full now. So there's not that many days and times left. Let me, let me just put the links in the chat. So if I, if I show you, I put two links in the chat. Um, and basically if you click on one of those links, then it'll take you to this page, which I'm about to show, share with you. Um, she says, yep, yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. It takes you to that page and um, which is, it's the registration form, which you fill in. And then the days and times are down here. Now the year fours, we only have space in these groups. There are two groups, but they are full now. So we have Tuesdays at 4.30 for maths and Wednesdays at 5.45 for English. Year five, please contact me separately because I need to make sure that it's the right Thing for you to join that it's a good fit 
okay but we do have just one space in these these ones here but um it's important that we we have a chat first okay um you can't see the link tina maybe i'll put it in hold on a sec um let me just stop that share oh i have to press send Ooh, there we go <laughs> i have to press send on the on the message so now there it is so the top group top one has 600 in it that's your pay up front option and then there's the monthly option just underneath that, which says 2, 220 in it. Okay. So I hope that's been useful. I hope at least, at the very least, you're going away with a better idea of what the 11 plus is and what you have to do in order to help your child prepare for that exam. Um, you've got some book recommendations, which I'm going to send you. You've got the curriculum I'm going to send you. Um, and if you'd like some professional support, then we are here and willing and um, able to help you as well. So please just do reach out. My email address, you'll have had a million different reminders about this session. So please do go to email. The text on that system is not my personal number. But if you email me, then that gets directly through to me. Um, and uh, if there aren't any other questions, I shall leave you to your afternoons. Please do reach out if you want to have a one to one chat because you're not 100% sure. Um, I don't teach on Friday mornings. I do teach most of the day, the rest of the week. I do some homeschooling. So um, please do reach out and we can have a chat. OK. Great to see you all. Sorry, I'm in my gloves. It's freezing in my house. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. OK, good luck. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Marion. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye bye.